Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to join in the celebration of Black History Month and to honor the profound contributions of black Americans in my hometown of Pacoima, California, and the broader San Fernando Valley. Following World War II, as, ready, as redlining policies segregated communities of color in Los Angeles and across the country, Pacoima became the center of African American life in the valley as black Americans led a cultural resurgence through the creation of dozens and dozens of churches, schools, and successful small businesses. Today, we take a moment to recount that rich and extensive history as we honor men of faith, women who always lend a helping hand, a group of young trailblazing ballplayers, and a historian who has chronicled these incredible stories. By cel celebrating Black History Month in the Northeast San Fernando Valley, we honor not only the struggles, but also the triumphs that have made our community the diverse and resilient tapestry it is today. Today, I rise to honor the Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church <clears throat> for Black History Month because a beacon of faith and a community service located in Pacoima. Established in 1942, Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church holds the distinction of being the first African-American church founded in the San Fernando Valley. In the face of racial uh, adversity, the Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church has flourished, growing from its humble beginnings with six families in 1942 to a congregation of around 500 African-American members in the 1950s and 60s. It is my privilege to honor the in, indomitable spirit of Reverend T.G. Pledger, whose visionary leadership paved the way for an extraordinary legacy beyond the walls of Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church. He was the founder and the first pastor of Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church. Born in Alabama, Reverend Pledger later moved to Los Angeles and was instrumental in the church's early days in 1942 Reverend Pledger and his wife came to the San Fernando Valley from Torrance, California. Pledger got a job at the Polsom Packing Company and bought a house next to the plant. After moving to the San Fernando Valley, Reverend Pledger had an encounter that inspired him to establish a church there. A young man relayed to him the struggles to find a place of worship in the area. Many of the African-American residents had to travel to Pasadena or other communities to find a church. In 1942, Reverend Pledger began Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church on the corner of Ralston Avenue and Pinney Street at a former dance hall known as Laurel Hall. <clears throat> By 1945, Reverend Pledger and the original congregations finished construction of the first African-American church in the San Fernando Valley on the corner of Norris Avenue and Pinney Street. As the population increased and the need of a larger facility was evident, Reverend Pleasure rebuilt Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church in 1958. Reverend Pleasure was an influential voice during the fair housing movement, which led to the establishment of the Pleasureville Senior Centers VIA, a testament to his enduring dedication to uplifting the lives of our seniors and families in Pacoima. The sec successful realization of this housing project stands as a shining example of Reverend Pledger and his congregation's commitment to compassion, service, and the betterment of our community. Pleasureville Senior Center sits adjacent to Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church along Van Nuys Boulevard. After Reverend Pledger, Reverend, after Reverend Pledger, there came Reverend D.D. D. Chapman served as pastor for 31 years, emphasizing the church's involving, excuse me, evolving role in a changing community. Reverend Chapman began his service to Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church in 1987 and played a crucial role in obtaining government funding for the Pleasureville Senior Citizens Via. Under Reverend Chapman's leadership, a 16,000 square foot community room was completed called the Great Room. The Great Room was host to various after-school programming, job training classes, and food and clothing distributions. His tireless efforts in revitalizing the Baptist Ministers Association, founding numerous churches, and advocating for the community on various platforms reflects 
a profound commitment to the his holistic well-being of those he served. Although Reverend Chapman passed away in 2019, his impact continues to resonate in the hearts of the people and the enduring mission of the Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church. The Reverend Jeffrey Martin continues the church's legacy of service and inclusivity to this day. During the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Reverend Martin was on the forefront in ensuring families had the resources they needed. They opened the doors of the Greater Room and hosted unhoused residents in their winter shelter, which holds a capacity of 138 individuals each night. We applaud the Mother Church of the San Fernando Valley Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church and its congregation for its 82 years of service, resilience, and dedication to fostering unity in our community. The impact of their outreach programs, particularly in addressing homelessness, is a testament to the church's commitment and making a positive difference in the lives of others. May the Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church continue to be a shining example of faith, compassion, and community service for many years to come. I rise today to, uh, to pay tribute to a distinguished individual whose life has been defined by service, leadership, and an unwavering commitment to justice. Deacon Robert Wynn, known affectionately as Bob, is a deacon of inspiration, a founder of the African American Leadership Organization, AALO, and a lifelong advocate for racial, economic, and social justice in Southern California and the San Fernando Valley. Bob Wynn was born in Birmingham, Alabama, a city steeped in the tumultuous history of the civil rights movement. Inspired by the indomitable spirit of Martin Luther King Jr., Bob's journey of activism began with a profound commitment to equality, and his dedication was not merely words, it was action. A distinguished veteran, Bob served in the United States Army with honor and distinction. His sacrifice and service laid the foundation for a lifetime dedicated to uplifting and empowering his community. After his military service, Bob pursued higher education, earning a degree in business administration from the University of Maryland. In the pivotal year of 1965, Bob walked alongside Congressman John Lewis across the Edmund Pettus Bridge on Bloody Sunday. This historic march for voting rights left an indelible mark on Bob's soul, shaping his commitment to justice and equality. His participation in such a seminal moment in the civil rights movement is a testament to his courage and dedication. For over five decades, Bob Wynn has served as a church deacon in the San Fernando Valley. His spiritual leadership has been a source of guidance and support for countless individuals. His commitment to faith has translated into action as he actively serves on numerous committees and commissions, leaving an enduring impact on the communities he has touched. Bob's vision for a more just society extends beyond the walls of the church. As the president and CEO of the African American Leadership Organization, he has been instrumental in fostering leadership advocacy and empowerment within the African American community. His tireless efforts have paved the way for progress in the San Fernando Valley, Antelope Valley, and the greater Los Angeles area. Bob's community involvement spans a multitude of organizations, each reflective of his dedication to justice. As chair of the board of the directors of El Proyecto del Barrio, Bob has played a crucial role in addressing community health and social services. His leadership on the San Fernando Valley NAACP executive board and as chair of the political action committee showcases the commitment to shaping policy for the betterment of all. He has also contributed to creating safe spaces with opportunities for young children and families to thrive through his role on the San Fernando Valley Boys and Girls Club Resources Board and the Mission City Community Network Black In Infant Health Program. Bob's service has also extended to the labor movement as the former director of community services for the United Food and Commercial Workers International Local 770. Bob's influence reached reaches statewide in California, having served on the state's commission on the Department of Corrections, where he contributed to shaping the policies that impact our criminal justice system. One of Deacon Bob Wynn's most important titles included being a husband and a father. 
He and his wife, Minnie, have been married for more than 40 years and are the parents of six wonderful children. I honor Deacon Robert Wynn, a living legend whose life has been a testament to service and empowerment. His journey from Birmingham to the San Fernando Valley has left an unforgettable mark on the fabric of our nation and his legacy will inspire for generations to come. I rise to recognize an extraordinary individual whose dedication to community empowerment and career development for youth of color has left a memorable mark on countless lives. Janet Lavender, a resident of North Hollywood and the founder of the not-for-profit organization Well Suited, embodies the spirit of service, resilience, and compassion. In 1997, Ms. Lavender took a bold step by founding Well Suited, an organization dedicated to providing college and career readiness support to young adults and teens. Her journey reflects a commitment to lifting others inspired by her own experiences, a veteran, a business administration graduate of the University of Maryland, and a lifelong advocate for justice. Ms. Lavender's story is one of triumph over diverse, uh, adversity. In 2013, she created Youth and a Passion, a remote curriculum powered by the world's leading learning management system, Canvas. This innovative program enables students to participate in an intensive course that helps them identify careers that are right for them. It provides essential information on educational paths, scholarships, internships, and extracurricular activities required to pursue their inspirations. Hundreds of students have since enrolled, customizing their college and career paths under Ms. Lavender's guidance. Janet Lavender's commitment to equity extends beyond education. In 2021, when the enactment of AB 101 made ethnic studies a required course for high school students in California, Ms. Lavender integrated ethnic studies into the well-suited curriculum. This reflects their, her dedication to a holistic approach to education that embraces diversity and inclusion. Beyond education, Ms. Lavender recognizes the importance of presentation and confidence in professional life. She experienced homelessness in the 1990s and understands the significance of proper attire during job interviews. Her organization not only provides clothing to those transitioning from welfare to work, but also offers an opportunity for the public to shop at their store, supporting the organization's mission. Well Suited's impact is exemplified by stories like that of Kate Fagan, a Weingart Center resident who found not only clothing, but confidence and empowerment through the services provided to her. I salute Janet Lavender for her exceptional leadership vision and unwavering dedication to the well-being and success of the youth and communities. Her legacy embodied in the work of Well Suited stands as a testament to the transformative power of education, mentorship, community support, and love. Mr. Speaker, I rise with an immense respect and gratitude to honor an outstanding individual whose lifetime of service and activism has been ingrained in the community. Patricia Pat Austin, Executive Director of the Inner Community Council's Alicia Bradas Duncan Multipurpose Center in Pacoima, stands as a testament to the transformative power of dedication, compassion, and community leadership for our seniors. Pat Austin's journey of service and activism began in the 1960s and 70s when she emerged as a formidable civil rights and community activist. A trailblazer in the fight against segregation, Pat led a movement to desegregate lunch counters. Her unwavering commitment to the justice laid the foundation for a lifetime dedicated to uplifting those around her. A distinguished scholar, Pat earned her bachelor's degree from Marshall University and pursued additional coursework at the University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Armed with education and a profound sense of justice, she dedicated her life to creating positive change. Currently serving as the Executive Director of Alicia Bradas Duncan Multipurpose Center, Pat Austin has become a beacon of hope for older adults in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. Her work at the Senior Center goes beyond the conventional understanding of a director's role. 
She provides not only essential services, but also a warm and caring environment that fosters a sense of community and belonging. In the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, when isolation became a formidable challenge for seniors, Pat took extraordinary measures to ensure that no one felt alone. She kept her line open, inviting individuals to call and share their stories, providing a lifeline for emotional support during those trying times. From updates on their lives to stories about monthly observances like Women's History Month, Pat made a difference by being a compassionate ear for all. At the Alicia Broaddus Duncan Multipurpose Center, Pat Austin's leadership extends far beyond the administrative realm. She is deeply involved in providing emergency food and services for older adults, addressing their immediate needs and ensuring their well-being daily meal their well-being. Daily meals, transportation, activities, social interaction, day trips are just a few aspects of the comprehensive support that seniors receive under Pat's compassionate guidance. Each year, the Broadus Senior Center hosts the annual interregional uh, cotillion to raise funds for continued programming and activities taking place at Pacoima uh, at the Pacoima Center for Seniors, in addition to nutritional meal services to emergency support services. Under Pat's leadership, the cotillion brings thousands of dollars for vital programs that seniors need and is a night of, uh, of dancing, music, and great food. Pat also plays a crucial role in connecting seniors to local and state resources. She's become a lifeline for those who may face challenges in accessing essential services, bridging the gap between the community and the resources that can enhance their quality of life. Pat's legacy is a testament to the impact that one individual can have on a community. Her dedication to the principles of justice, equality, and community service serves as an inspiration for generations to come. As we honor Pat, today let us recognize not only her achievements, but the enduring spirit of compassion that defines her character. I extend my deepest gratitude to Patricia Pat Austin for her de decades of selfless service, activism, and leadership. Her contributions to the well-being of our community are immeasurable, and her legacy will continue to inspire us all for many, many years to come. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to honor and recognize a remarkable individual who has made significant contributions to preserving African American history and enriching our understanding of our shared past. Crystal Jackson, born and raised in Pacoima, California, has dedicated her life to telling of stories that often go unheard. Crystal Jackson is not only an author, filmmaker, and historian, but a trailblazer whose unique stories about an over, often overlooked but rich cultural African-American history have captivated audiences in the San Fernando Valley and beyond. Her impressive body of work reflects her unwavering commitment to shedding light on the untold stories that have shaped our nation. In 2019, Crystal released her critically acclaimed history book, The Entrance, Pacoima's Story. Over 676 pages, she meticulously traces the 1,500 years of Pacoima one of Los Angeles' oldest towns. Through five years of research and countless interviews with current and former residents, Crystal has brought to life the rich tapestry of Pacoima's history, ensuring that the stories of its people are preserved for generations to come. Beyond her work as an author, Crystal has made a significant contributions as a filmmaker. She has written several motion picture screenplays and directed the award-winning film Pacoima Stories, Land of Dreams, which is nominated for Best Feature Documentary at the Pan-African American Film Festival. Through her films, Crystal has brought attention to the dreams, struggles, and triumphs of the community she calls home. In 2022, Crystal released her first biographical fiction book, Not Colored, a historical novel based on the life of the first woman to work in the LAPD's detective unit, who happened to be black. This work not only explores historical milestones, but also challenges and prevailing narratives, offering a fresh perspective on the experiences of underrepresented individuals. In addition to her creative endeavors, Crystal is dedicated 
to community, uh, is a dedicated community leader. She serves on the advisory council for the Getty Conservation Institute and the City of Los Angeles' Office of Historic Preservation. Crystal is also a special consultant for the UCLA Histor History and Ge Geography Project, working, the working to incorporate local history into LAUSD curriculum. She also serves on the board of directors at both the Center for Advanced Learning Charter School and the Museum of the San Fernando Valley. As the president of the Pacoima Historical Society, Crystal has become a driving force within her community, utilizing her extensive social media following to amplify the importance of preserving and celebrating African-American history. A command, <clears throat> I commend Crystal Jackson for her outstanding contributions to African-American history, her dedication to preserving untold stories, and her unwavering commitment to community service. Through her words and films, Crystal continues to inspire us all to appreciate the diverse and complex history that shapes our nation. I rise to honor and celebrate a momentous achievement in the history of American sports, the remarkable journey of the North Valley Broncos. The North Valley Broncos were the first all-black baseball team from the San Fernando Valley to play in the Little League World Series. In the 1950s, faced with the refusal of the Pacoima Little League to accept their black boys, four determined fathers took matters into their own hands. They leased a vacant lot of land near Hanson Dam for a dollar a month and formed the North Valley Broncos. In the early years, they faced many hardships, including playing on an uneven field that was infested with gophers and old baseball equipment. On their away, away games, the team found themselves sleeping on gymnasium floors while other teams enjoyed more comfortable accommodations. Despite facing an incredible circumstances, the boys forged lasting memories as they bonded through late night pillow fights and midnight kitchen raids. In 1965, the North Valley Broncos' <clears throat> hard work and determination finally paid off. Led by the Little League sluggers Ricky Chaprin and future USC legend Anthony Davis, the Broncos traveled to New Bedford, Massachusetts, where they won two games in the Little League World Series. The Broncos' success paved the way for future generations, ensuring the door would remain open for those seeking lasting progress and inclusivity. In 2023, the city of Los Angeles dedicated the intersection of Drawnfield Avenue and Osborne Street in Bucoima as North Valley Broncos Little League Team Square. The intersection is across from Handsome Dam Park where the team once practiced. Thank you to North Valley Broncos for their courage, resilience, and groundbreaking achievements. Their legacy lives on in the hearts of those they inspired and across the sports fields of America. <clears throat>